Hey everybody. Today I'm going to do a complete analysis of variance, or ANOVA, using R. I'm going to be working with the Penguins dataset that's included in the Palmer Penguins package, which I've already loaded up with Palmer with library Palmer Penguins. I've also loaded up Tidyverse, of course. The specific question I'm going to be interested in is, does species help to explain flipper length? So let's take a look at our data set with the glimpse command to see a little bit more specifically what uh, we're dealing with. Here you can see that we have 344 observations on eight variables, including species, which is a factor variable, categorical variable. I can tell you that it has three levels, a daily chin strap in Gen 2. There's also flipper length MM, which is a numeric variable. Before we start doing any sort of statistical inference, including ANOVA, we should visualize our data if at all possible. So I'm going to get a side-by-side -side box plot to start with. So let's do a ggplot of penguins. And on the x-axis, we'll put species. On the y-axis, flipper length mm. And again, I want a box plot. OK. So at a glance, it does look like the Gen 2 penguins have longer flippers on average. The chin straps are a little bit bigger than the adelies. Um, it's not entirely clear, especially in that ladder, for that ladder um, observation, whether this is just due to random variation within the data or whether these differences might be statistically significant. So we're going to want to run an analysis of variance, first of all, to tell if species has an impact on flipper length from the explanatory perspective, just as a big picture question, and then potentially run a post hoc Tukey test to see where those differences might lie. There are three assumptions when we run an analysis of variance, and we have to keep each of them in mind at the start of our analysis. First of all, the observations have to be independent, and this is really a design question. In this case, we're looking at individual, individual penguins, so it's reasonable to assume that the observations are, in fact, independent. The second assumption is that the observations are approximately normally distributed within our groups. A glance at this box plot seems to indicate that that's a reasonable assumption here. We're seeing that within each of the groups, the flipper lengths are at least symmetric. Finally, we need the variances to be approximately equal within each of the groups. And again, that seems like a reasonable assumption here. The widths of the boxes are the same in each of these groups, indicating that the IQRs are approximately the same. So hopefully the variances are about the same as well. Let's get one more plot as we're thinking about these assumptions. Let's get histograms within each of these groups. So ggplot penguins again. And in this case, I just want a single variable, the flipper length. Geome histogram. But this time, I want to get a, um, a faceted plot. So let's do facet wrap. And let's do it according to species. And I think for clarity, I want just one, I want these all in one column. So let's do n call equals one. And I'll zoom in on that. OK, so within each of these groups, I am seeing a distribution that looks um, approximately normal, or at the very least, it's plausible that these observations in each groups, each of these groups comes from a normal distribution. Remember, ANOVA is robust against violations of normality and against differences in variance um, up to, um, let's say, within reason. Let's, um, let's do just a little bit more to check the equality of variance here. Let's get a numerical comparison of the variance within each of these groups. So I'm going to take penguins, and I'm going to want to get the variances within each of the groups. So let's take penguins and group it by species. And within each of the groups, we'll get a summary. So summarize. Let's just get the variance of the flipper length. And we have just a couple of NAs in this set. So let's disregard those with na.rm equals true. I know that there's two NAs because I saw that in my plots right here. Remove two rows that contain non-finite values. OK, so in this situation, we see that the variances are 42.8, 50.9, and 42.1, respectively. 
those are about as close as you can ever as you'll generally ever see in the real world as a rule of thumb you'll hear that uh, it's okay to proceed with an analysis of variance if the variances are within a factor of two sometimes people will say three of one another larger sample sizes are always better there of course Okay, so the assumptions of the analysis of variance test do seem to be satisfied. Let's go ahead and proceed. We are going to want to do an AOV. Let's save our result. I'll just give it a generic name of model. The command is AOV for analysis of variance. And within that command, we're going to use model notation. So first, we're going to put the quantitative variable, the thing that we're viewing as the response variable. So flipper length, mm and then a tilde, sort of explained by species. Finally, we have to let R know what data set to look in to find those variables. So of course that's penguins. Okay, let's take a look at that model with summary model, and that'll give us our analysis of variance table. Okay, so let's see here. We can see our um, degrees of freedom, we can see our sum of squares, our mean sum of squares, and the f value of the test. In particular, we're seeing a p-value of 2 times 10 to the negative 16th. So that's a minuscule p-value, regardless of our significance level. This is going to be considered statistically significant. So our conclusion is that species does help to explain flipper length. To say it a bit more um, technically, we would be able to reject the null hypothesis that there is no association between those two variables. Okay, great. Before we wrap up, let's do a post hoc test to see which of the differences between the groups might be statistically significant. There's many different post hoc tests that you can do here. One thing that you should avoid doing is simply running a t-test repeatedly for each of the three groups. Your probabilities of false positives will get big. We're going to use a standard method, the Tukey Honest Standard Differences method. And the nice thing here with this function is we can literally just put in our analysis of variance model, the linear model that we have. OK. So what we're getting here are confidence intervals, by default 95%, for the differences between the individual groups. So between chin strap and a daily, the 95% confidence interval would be from about 3.5 to about 8.2. and p-values against the null hypothesis that in fact the means between those two groups are exactly the same. In this case we're seeing statistically significant evidence that the differences between the means in each of these groups are different pairwise.